Welcome to this course, FP&A Professional Dashboard Visualizations and Analysis. This course is actually the seventh course in a series of seven courses in total. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to check out the other six courses, then you should definitely check them out. Each one of these seven courses uses the same financial model that we're actually looking at right now. And in this course, we're going to walk you through exactly how to complete this financial model. Let's jump in and get started. So welcome to the next FP&A course in the series where we're going to look at dashboards and visualizations. So this is really the moment where all of the hard work that we've put in to the detail on the model tab and all the aggregation on the totals tab is going to come together here on the graphs tab because we're going to pull it all together into these rich exhibits so we can allow the data to tell a story to the crucial decision makers that are going to be using this model. Now these dashboards have been prepared to tell us information about four main categories. Number one, the company's revenue. Number two, ending cash balances, number three, the EBITDA margin, and also the net income margin. Now, for each one of those four categories, we've prepared a dashboard with a very similar format. So let's look at that format starting with the revenue category. So let's start off by looking at the revenue dashboard that's on the left-hand side of your screen right now. First of all, if we look down to the bottom here, we can see the legend. So the actuals are a solid line and the forecast is a dotted line. Let's look at this first exhibit here where we have everything by month. And we can see 2024 is a solid line. So those are actuals. 2025 is a dotted line. And we can see exactly how 2025 is tracking against the budget that's been set. And just below that exhibit that shows things on a monthly basis, we have a quarterly exhibit down here. It follows a similar structure. We can see 2024 by quarter, all actuals, 2025 is a forecast, and always comparing to the budget. And finally, down here in this corner, we have everything summarized by year. So we can see 2024 against 2025, and we can see that we're just ahead of the budget for 2025 as well. Now, if we could draw your attention over here to the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that we're tracking the ending cash balance, but not only the ending cash balance. We've set this up so that if the value comes below a value of zero, that means that the company is dipping into its line of credit or its revolver. And again, we're tracking this by month, by quarter, and also by year. So those were the first two categories for our dashboards, for revenue and for the ending cash balance. Let's use the page down to pop down here, and we want to look at the EBITDA margin and also the net income margin. And for both of these margin dashboards, you're going to see a similar structure where we're showing 2024, 2025, always comparing to the budget, and always showing everything by month, down here, by quarter, and by year as well. Now, as you can see, we've jumped a little bit further down in the dashboard to the area where we're showing the data. And this is really where all of the magic is going to happen. So we've prepared a little demonstration for you here. And as you can see here for 2024 and 2025, we have 100% a forecast. And you can see over here, dotted line for 2024, dotted line for 2025 as well. So what we're going to do now is just select this row for 2024 and watch very closely over here on this part of the graph as we start putting in actuals. We're going to put in actuals for January, February. There you can see this line go solid like this. We're going to continue to put them in as we move across like this. We're almost at June. As soon as we put in June, watch closely what happens down here for this quarterly graph. As soon as we put the actuals in for June, we get a solid line there saying the first quarter and the second quarter are complete. So let's continue across these months just like this, putting in the actuals. And just before we put in December, let's bring our attention down here to the year. As soon as we put in the results for December, that's going to go solid, showing us we have a full year of actuals. So as you can see, these graphs are totally dynamic and they're very well formatted to be able to effectively tell a story to the key decision makers that are going to be using this model. Let's dive into this course and get started. As you can see, we're set up on the graphs tab of the model, but we haven't started up at the top of the tab. All the graphs are up there and they're pre-built, but we've started down here. As you can see, we're in row 117, and this is where we need to start, get a bunch of formulas established and headings so that we can make those graphs come live. Now, the first thing that we can connect over here 
is these headings. Now we want the months to appear across this bottom row here, the quarters to appear across the top. It's going to be really simple. We're just going to establish a link. We're going to start in this cell here, cell F120, put in an equal sign, and then we're going to pop over two tabs to the model tab, and we want to link right in here where it says January into cell G7 and hit enter. Now that that's in place, let's just do a copy. We're going to highlight across, and we're going to highlight up like this, Alt-ES, down to formulas, and hit enter. So we're obviously going to be showing 12 months of data across here, but over here we want to aggregate by quarter. And if we just put a one into the first cell, just put one, enter, we can see we've pre-formatted these to show up with a Q in front of them. So with the one entered, we can go into the next cell and say equals one plus one, like this. We hit enter. Now we can take this formula, copy it, and highlight across, Alt-ES, down to formulas, and hit enter. And so now we've created Q1 through Q4. So then once we've shown an aggregation for each quarter, we would want to show a full year. So what we're going to do just to keep things simple in this next cell here is just type in the word year like that. Now we can pop over here and get these years here linked as well. Now this first label here should be 2024. And the closest place to link that would be, let's put in an equal sign, we can just head straight over to the totals tab here, and we want to link to this figure right here, which is cell N6, and then we hit enter. Now we won't be able to copy the 2024 downwards, we'll need to link the second one again to get 2025. Let's put in an equal sign, back over to the totals tab, and our link will be to over here, which is cell O6 and we hit enter. So now that we have our headings and our labels set up, we should talk a little bit about the structure of the data. Let's pop over to the model tab for one moment. Recall the structure of our data here was such that we were forecasting 24 months in a row like this. For instance, we would have 24 months of data here for our total revenue. But over on the graphs tab, we need a different structure. We want a different structure, in fact. We want to show the data here for 2024, and then on the row underneath, we would like to show the data for 2025. And this is really so that we can get a graph or a line for 2024 and 2025 up on the same graph for our dashboard. So we have our headings and our dates and our labels set up at this point. And what we're going to want to do in the next video is populate these areas in here with checkboxes. And we will be using some formulas that will be familiar to you. So let's jump ahead. See you in the next video. Now we have the labels and all the headings set up. So let's pop into this area here and get focused on the checkboxes. So the first thing for us to notice is that if we put a one in this cell and hit enter, we can see it's pre-formatted to show up as a checkbox. So let's just delete that. Now we're gonna establish a link. We're gonna put in an equal sign and pop over to the model tab. And we're simply gonna link right here to this cell here, which is cell G8 and hit enter. So this has established the link to January 2024, but we need to respect the structure of the data. In here, we need to link to January 2025. So let's put in an equal sign there, pop over to the model tab, and we're gonna to go to the same row, but across here to January 2025, which is cell S8. And let's hit enter there. Now that we've established links in here to model G8 and in here to model S8, we can hold these down like this, copy them, control C, highlight across like that, Alt ES, down to formulas, and hit enter, and all those links are now established. So now we wanna focus our attention over here for these quarters. And in order to have actuals for Q1, we would obviously need actuals for these three months. Now we wanna remember that inside here, these are really ones. So the logic is going to be, if this adds up to three, then we would have an actual here in Q1. Let's put that logic in using a sum ifs function and also an if function like we did previously. So let's start off with the sum ifs function equals sum if, and we can see down there sum ifs plural. The sum range is going to be across here, these cells, put in a comma. The criteria range will be up here for the quarters, 
another comma, and the criteria one will be Q1. We can close the bracket and hit enter. Now this looks a little funny because of the way the formatting is set, but let's pop back into here with an F2. We want to lock down some cells. So first of all, this red reference right here can be completely locked. So we tap F4 once. Over here for this blue reference, we only want the columns locked. So let's tap F4 once twice, actually three times, we'll do it. And then up here, we wanna lock the row reference here. So we're gonna tap the F4 key twice, just like that. We're gonna hit enter again. Now let's pop back into the cell. We wanna add the if function in. So what we remember here is right now, this sum ifs function is adding to three. So we have a full quarter of actuals. So let's add the if function in at the start, equals if, open bracket, right? So if this entire sum ifs function is equal to three, then we want Excel to put a one in the cell. Otherwise, we want it to revert to a zero and we'll close that second bracket. Now we're gonna hit enter. So now that that formula is complete, let's pop up here and do a copy, control C, highlight across, alt S, down to formulas, and we're gonna check our work. So we're gonna go from here to a diagonal cell, which would be down here, and we wanna hit F2. And we can see everything looks great. This red reference has not moved at all. This purple reference has moved across, but it did not move down. And the blue reference moved down with our selection, but the columns did not change. Perfect. So the formula over here now for the year will be really simple. Let's just put in equals if, and we want to say if the sum of this we're gonna close the bracket. Well, if the sum is equal to four, we know we have a full year. So then we put a comma and we'd want Excel to put a one in there, another comma, otherwise we'd want this to revert obviously to a zero and then close the bracket. We can hit enter, we can do a copy, control C, alt S, down to formulas and hit enter. And if we just check this one really quickly, you can see that's copied down perfectly. So it's great that we have all of these check boxes set up because these are gonna be critical in helping us turn certain line items on the graphs on and off, which you will see in some of the upcoming lessons. Let's jump ahead now and set up some more labels and also start to pull in some of the data for the company's revenue. We'll see you there. So in this video, we're gonna focus on setting up some more labels. Now up here, we have labels which are dynamically connected into the model. So we wanna to continue to connect to those so when we change the year for the model it flows all the way through and all of the labels update. Now notice in these cells right here how we had linked over to the totals tab in both cases. Now we wouldn't want to link again to the totals tab down here and why wouldn't we do that? Well it would make our model a little bit more difficult to audit. So instead since we've already pulled those numbers in here to the sheet we'll just simply link up to here 2024 and then we can highlight down down with the shift key and use control D, which is a fill down. So we can see now that the formula is copied down nicely, but now we want to completely lock it in place to use those labels again. So let's pop into the cell with an F2, hit F4 once, and then same thing on the cell below, F2, F4, like this, so they're locked down. Now what we can do is we can copy both of those labels, copy, and then just do a straight paste right here, control V, and a straight paste right here, control V. Now we will go through a little discussion later and explain all of these labels and how they're gonna work. For now, let's focus our attention up here and we need to essentially repeat the headings that are above. So we'll start in this cell, let's put in an equal sign, just go up and link to this cell, F120, hit enter. We're gonna do a copy, we're gonna highlight across like this and up, Alt S, down to formulas and hit enter. Now this formula here, or these formulas we should say, are working really, really well, and you can see the link. But if we wanna be able to copy these headings down to other parts in the model, like down here, we would wanna lock our cells properly. So let's do that as a best practice. Let's pop into this cell with an F2 and tap F4 a couple of times because we wanna essentially lock the row reference there. Same thing below, F2, F4 twice to lock the row reference. Now we're gonna do a copy highlight across, Alt S, and down to formulas. And now that that's been completed, we can actually copy this cell here. This cell in the bottom left corner, copy, and we can highlight across to here, and again, do a paste special, 
Alt-ES down to formulas and hit enter. And that puts the quarters in place for us. And now we can pop over into this cell and put our label in. So year, just like that. Now what we want to do actually is we want to have this spread out across this area because we're going to use this entire area for the year. And this is where we want to teach you a new technique that you may not have seen before. So what we're going to do is expand the ribbon, control shift F1, just like this. Now what we could do and what a lot of people would do is highlight across these two cells like this. And then they would go up here and use the merge and center button. Okay, let's click that button for one moment. You can see what it's done. It's actually created one merged cell here. So it's taken two cells and merged them into one. And this is a very bad habit in financial modeling. So let's just tap the undo key, which is control Z like this to unmerge those cells and look at a different technique. So we can collapse the ribbon again, control shift F1. We're gonna use the keyboard here. So what we would ask you to do Pop into the first cell and use the shift key to highlight across. We're going to hit control one to get into the format cells dialog box that you can see here. Let's hit the right arrow to get into alignment and now use the tab key once. So we're in this horizontal alignment box right here. Now we can use the down arrow and we want to go down here to center across selection. Once you get to center across selection, hit enter once and enter a second time, and you can see we've achieved the same result, but we have not merged the cells. So definitely, if you have a habit where you've been merging cells, you wanna break that habit and start using center across selection. If you're working on models uh, with your team that have merged cells in them, great idea to go through and find them, clean them up and convert them over to center across selection. Merging cells leads to all kinds of problems in financial modeling. You definitely want to avoid it. Let's jump ahead and we'll touch base in the next video. Continue learning. Join CFI today.